Hello, and welcome to Containment Breach, Three Minute Meets. I am Fugitive Pums co-founder, Christian DeMatteo, and today we are going to talk with another incredible indie creator from the Containment Breach series. I've got here Containment Breach Volume 1, Quarantine Chronicles, Containment Breach Volume 2, Myth Reborn. We have just uh, uh, completed, well, depending on when you're watching this, uh, the Kickstarter for Containment Breach Volume 3 of Clouds and Ether. And I'm so excited to have you here. T, uh, who the heck are you? Um, I am a British American aspiring comic writer. I grew up in England and I started writing short stories before I could even properly write. It took me, I, to this day, I still can't properly write, but that's, that's nothing. <laughs> um, and I, I got into comics because I started writing like I started reading comics when I was 17 and I wrote one for myself. It was, you know, it was not good, but I started writing them like little short scripts as well, a little bit of playwriting. And then I got into um, Scott's online class, um, Scott Snyder, and he was offering a class I, and I joined, I was on his discord. And in that discord, there were members that wanted to make their own anthology um, Scott, it's now called Scott Snyder Presents Tales of the Cloakroom. So I got in there, I wrote a story there, and this last year I've just been submitting to all types of comic anthologies, and you accepted me, so thank you for that. <laughs> I, I loved your submission. Uh, James and I, James Lyons, uh, co-founder of Fugitive Poems, uh, when we were going through the submissions, we saw, saw your stories, and um, we were just so taken with, there. there's a, um, a humanity and an empathy, even in your wildest stories. So the concept may be wild, but it's rooted so firmly in this, this empathy of what it is to, to be alive, to be of the flesh and to be of the mind that we are uh, so fragile so often. It really, it, it, uh, it touched, uh, it, it sparked something. It felt like it mattered. And that's something that really, that might be the best way to say it. It felt like it mattered. Um, you read your first comic at 17, though. Now, that's a little, as that's lately. a little late, forget, right? So what was the comic and, and why then? So I never grew up going to comic stores. I never had comic stores. But I was living in Connecticut and I got Hoopla through my library, which is a, like an online library. And they had Batman year one. And I was like, well, this is the best place to start. It's year one. Before I knew year zero existed. So I read that and I've always been a fan of Batman and I like I just wanted to study the art style and I wanted to learn how to write the story and through that I, I got into the Batman universe and I, I haven't really left it but I started writing more like I like over the especially during um, 2020 I started reading more indie comics you know and branching out and learning more about the industry as well I, I studied a little bit in school um, I did like a semester that of a project that I wanted to start, and I studied the history of comics. So, you, you know, you talked about Scott Snyder. The New mm -hmm. Fifty Two run is yeah. some of the best Batman storytelling ever. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm a comic fan from the '80s and '90s, so I've got I've got all the baggage of you know you know when it was great on me. But he comes along with the New Fifty Two with Court of Owls yeah. and all the stories that follow that, and he takes Batman in this new direction that is completely fits the tradition, uh, fits the feel of Batman, but opens up new worlds of storytelling. Uh, and seeing what you write, I can see how that how that appealed uh, to you. Um, uh, year one did come out before year zero, uh, and and there's a little known <laughs> there's a little known year two, which Todd McFarlane drew, which people don't realize, uh, and it's pretty cool. Um, so. Um, why, uh, what, what are some of the indies that you read? Like, who are some of the, who are some of your influences in the indie world? Okay, so oh, my mind is going to go blank. So something is reading The Children, which is, is kind of indie. Yeah. Um, yeah. The Old Guard, which I, I love. I love The Old Guard so much. I really wish they'd make a second movie. 
But, I, um, I haven't watched the movie yet because I'm, I'm literally last night I put down I'm halfway through the uh, short story collection. So I've read mm-hmm. volumes one and two. And it's so funny that you said that because I'm my brain is deep in old guard right now. I'm reading yeah. Tales Through Time and it's like I need to read that as on my to do list. It, um, the, the first story written by the by uh, Rucka and um, who's the artist? I just blanked on his name. Yeah. Forgive me if you watch this. Um, the their story. I don't know if you know the thought, the philosophical thought experiment, the replacement, uh, or the replacement argument. They took mm-hmm. that thought experiment and wrote a comic around her acts, and it is awesome. It's like five pages and it's powerful. Uh, okay. I think the old guard is brilliant. What a concept! Yeah, I mean, um, I just got the color of always a couple. I got it a couple of months ago. I just, I still need to read it. Oh, uh, um, no, it's over. It's over there. I love, I love it. I love um, it. huge uh, Brent, Brent Fisher fan. Uh, and uh, uh, Gabe Martini is in that book. One of my, he's an artist. One of yeah. my favorite people on, on the planet. There's so much good stuff in that book. Yep. Yeah. That's one of the things I did when I, like, even before I read it, I've been looking through the pages and I'm just like, I want to find all these artists. I just want to, I want to find all of them uh i could i could introduce you to gabe uh gabe gabe if you're watching this uh, uh reach out you've got to meet t uh you're gabe amazing. is in volume four with you uh working with uh dustin luke nelson on a terrific storm uh, story called sleep stream um and he is in volume two he's got the very first story in the book with dustin luke nelson again uh called dad's lesson um oh. there's a story There's a story in The Color of Always, and forgive me, I can't remember the name of it, uh, with a, a sailor that gets washed overboard. Yes. That's Gabe. Yes, I've, yeah. That's Gabe. Forgive me, I can't remember the writer's name off the top of my yeah. head. I can see the book right over there. Yeah, it's beautiful. It is. That's, that, know. that's his work. Uh, um, T, where, well, you know, so let's talk about Containment Breach. What, what did you work on, without giving away the whole story, what did you work on for Containment Breach, Volume 4? I'm going to call it a dark fairy tale. Good. So okay. it's, I'm, you know, I, I read, a, I just finished Sandman. So there's a lot of Neil Gaiman in there, but it's a concept about star people who are come down from the stars. They make up all the stars in the universe and they take human form and they go down to earth and they have certain tasks they need to do on earth. It's interesting that you phrase it that way, because that sounds like the beginning of a universe a huge story and the fact is your story doesn't feel that way and and i think that that is such a compliment to to a writer especially these days everybody's so focused on world building that the first entry you always feel like well now there's a million more things i need to know or this is clearly just the mythology behind it when i read the star people which i love so much and and folks i cannot wait for you to see this you you want to back containment breach of clouds and ether because you got to read this story um when i read it i don't feel like i'm missing anything i feel like i'm reading a completely contained story and if nothing else ever happened with it i'd be utterly satisfied because i got what i needed out of it but if there were more stories in that universe i'd also be thrilled as opposed to so much that i read now where you read the first book of something and you're like well this was a setup this doesn't feel like a setup at all. And that, that's a real skill. Um, who, did, who did you work with on this? You had a, a terrific artist and a terrific letter. Yeah. I'm, so he, I asked for him to send me a voicemail because I've never spoken to him. Jacobo Cas, Castilli is his name. Um, Elite, he's an Italian artist. And I've worked with him before. I worked with him on Tales of the Cloakroom in another story. I pinched him from someone else in that anthology because he was just so good. It was was the first time working with an artist. So I'm just like, yeah, I don't, I didn't know all the etiquette of it. But (laughs) he, he is truly incredible. He'll send me sketches and I'll, I'll make the tiniest tweaks and then he'll get back to me in seconds. And he works really well. And he, he does a really beautiful thing with colors as well. In this story, it's all kind of the same um, tone-ish, this bluish, bluish haze because it's during nighttime. The first story I worked with him, it started out being kind of yellow. Um, and then you go into a funeral home 
and it's very dark colors and it's very um, somber mode. And then by the end of it, it, it kind of brightens up again. Yes, 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 yes. I, I so taken with the art and, uh, and your letterer. Yeah. Aubrey. Aubrey Lynn Jepson, uh, uh, mm -hmm. who I actually got to speak to already. I haven't talked mm -hmm. to, uh, uh, how, how does he say his name? Jacobo Castilli. Jacobo Castilli. Um, been awesome to talk to via email and i'm very much hoping we get one of these done uh aubrey and i spoke and uh uh getting to see how aubrey goes through the process of lettering was fascinating and hearing how you all work together uh was was just tremendous and, and it shows this 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 comic is uh, uh just fantastic it's one of it, it's it's a standout in a book of standouts and, and that's really impressive um so this is going to air uh, mm -hmm. This will be on YouTube in probably April or uh, May 2023. What okay. should we be looking for from T right now in April or May 2023? Well, by that point, hopefully another anthology or two, but long term, I'm working with Audrey and Aubrey right now to publish a graphic novel. So she's my editor. Perfect. And hopefully will be my letter as well. So that's number one priority. That's been priority for two years now. So might not be ready by April, but I'm hoping to work with an artist for, on a webtoon. So I have the outline right now. So I've got, I've got to find funding. But after that, I'm hoping to work with her for um, a fantasy tale with dragons and magical weapons and all that. Oh, oh, that sounds awesome. So where do we go? Where do we go to keep up with T? Because we want to know what T is doing. What, what are the, where's the social media we should be watching? I was not prepared for that. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> As a creative, sorry, you have social media right there. Yeah. Sorry, are you on sorry. Twitter? Yes, I am on Twitter. It's T Andrews B. The letter T then, or T-E? Yeah, so T-E okay. and then Andrews B. Okay, at the thoughts at, on Twitter and Instagram. And on Instagram, I am Thea T H E A A one nine nine nine. T H E A A. Yeah, two A's, and, and then nineteen ninety nine. Nineteen ninety. I was very creative with these these names. My my Twitter name is so bad because I had no idea I'd be using it to promote myself at any point. It's at C D M. ETC, my initials, Christian DeMatteo, etc. Because I couldn't come up with anything for an email address. You want to talk about 1999? In 1994, when we first got email through AOL, so now you know I'm 900 years old. Uh, it was like, well, you need an email address. And I'm like, I have CDM, my initials. And my dad was like, no, it needs to be six characters. I'm like, etc. <laughs> now I've got to tell people. So like what's, that, your, what's your Twitter handle? And I'm like, okay, so you're ready for these letters? <laughs> It's awful, but what are you going to do? Um, I've worked so hard on it, I can't change it at this point. <laughs> so this is where we go uh, to follow T's work. Uh, T, I, I'm a fan. I am so excited to have you in our book. The story is absolutely gorgeous. And, and I. <laughs> so when we got to the script writing phase and you sent the script in, I had tears in my eyes. <laughs> And I'm like, okay, I was not expecting this at all. And we were actually editing Monsters, Beasts, and ba Bastards and mm -hmm. um, of Clouds and Ether at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going from these hyper-violent stories to, to these really cool sci-fi. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, <laughs> I not, did not see that coming. <laughs> uh, and, I, and that's what we want. We think of these books as like mixtapes. Mm. it's not all the same kind of thing we don't tell people what genre we don't tell people what they're applying for <laughs> no, you didn't i was one and blind say so, hey you want to be in an anthology send stuff that you like <laughs> that you've done and then we accept you and then we let you know what the theme of that particular volume is every volume has a different theme and then we make every team come up with a creative prompt could be whatever uh, uh books in the garden uh, the shoe yeah, yeah. I lost last summer, terrible twos. And we shuffle them up and then redistribute them. And then every team has to write a story somehow under the umbrella of that book and somehow including 
whatever absurd theme uh, that or a creative prompt that they got handed. And um, you did so so smoothly that I I was I didn't even notice it the first three times. And the fourth time I read, I'm like, oh, that's right. And there that is. <laughs> it took me a while to get there. I was just I got that prompt. I'm like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? But I feel like I gave I didn't mean for this, but I think I gave them a harder prompt. So I'm I'm looking forward to seeing their work and being like, I really prompt? hope I didn't. I didn't hope you like uh, love is violent, something like that. Was yes. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to I have it in a file here somewhere. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, th this is this was an idea I had on the very first one. There were only a couple of teams. We did it as a zine. And I said, you know what, everyone, come up with a creative prompt. And I swapped them around because I love improv creation. Mm. I like prompt-based creation because you get something you would never have thought of before. Otherwise, you find yourself on the same highway all the time. T, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. Uh, and um, I, uh, I, I really encourage folks to get on T's Twitter, get on Instagram, follow because there's big things coming here there's there's the kind of comics that resonate for a long time are going to be coming out of tea uh and uh and i recommend it highly fugitivepoems.com get the containment Breach series subscribe to fugitive poems channel on youtube like this video i'd say as many times as possible but you can only do it once uh tell your friends tell your family at fugitive poems on instagram at fugitive poems on twitter at cdm ETC on Twitter. <laughs> we are Fugitive Poems and we make comics. <laughs>